in the previous lecture we saw how a randomly moving in homogeneity magnetic inhomogeneity in a plasma can scatter off a particle and the charged particle can get accelerated and this type of acceleration is called as your uh, second order fermi acceleration and in the last lecture we derived what is a typical accelerator electron distribution by the uh, by this uh, moving scatterers now if the plasma is flowing at a supersonic speed then the plasma uh, then it can give rise to shock and the shock is a discontinuity which divides the fluid with the two two thermodynamic different thermodynamic conditions at the both the sides now there will be magnetic inhomogeneity embedded on the both the side of the fluid so the charged particle can get scattered by this inhomogeneity and will will cross the shock to one fourth and we will see this process will eventually accelerate the charged particle and this type of acceleration is called as your fermi first order acceleration oh, sorry this is called as shock acceleration and this is this you will see that this comes in your order of v by c so it was called as a fermi first order acceleration so before we start going into the detail of how this particular being accelerated by shock front let us try to see how the fluid on the both the side of the shock front uh or uh, the thermodynamic uh, parameters on the both the side of the shock front are connected so to before we we also have to make clear certain definitions before we, when we dis, when we speak about a shock that is the upstream and the downstream the term which is usually very confusing uh, for, at least for me i feel it very confusing so let us fix up what is the what we speak what we say about upstream and what we call about a downstream so the 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 fluid ahead of the shock we call it as a upstream and the behind the shock which we call as a uh, downstream or alternatively what we can say as the shock moves so the shock fluid we call it as an uh, downstream region and the unshocked fluid we call as an upstream region and then we will have some basic assumptions to keep our discussion simple we are going to assume the shock front to be a plane shock front and moving at a uh, at a velocity less than the velocity uh, means at a non relativistic velocity so we are not going to deal about the relativistic shock we are going to deal about the non relativistic shock and the fluid flow is going to be uh, normal to the shock front so the velocity vector will be always normal to the shock front and one more assumption we have uh, that is uh, in the whole calculation what we have is the sh the upstream fluid will be at rest and the shock is going to move at a velocity u so that means in the shock front the upstream is going to move to approach it as a velocity u so and we will do all our calculations because that's simpler in a frame at which the shock is at rest there's nothing but the sitting on the shock and we are going to see how this uh, fluid on the thermodynamic parameters on the fluid on the uh, on the both sides of the shock they are being connected so let the shock velocity in the lab frame be b lab frame b equal to u i'm writing capital u so now when we sit in the shock frame the upstream fluid since we said upstream fluid is going to be at rest so it's going to move with velocity uh, which is again will be equal to u magnitude will be u and the downstream will have some velocity v2 so we will define now in the shock frame shock frame we will define the upstream velocity is equal to u1 i'm writing u1 which is nothing but equal to magnitude of u so all the one when i write one that denotes the upstream quantity and the two denotes the downstream quantity and the downstream velocity is equal to v2 once the shock developed and it reaches a steady stage a certain uh, conditions certain certain quantities are 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 to be conserved and that define the basis of how the thermodynamic quantities on the both the sides of the shock fronts are connected so let us define those conditions one those conservation conservation quantity conserved quantities one by one so the first one is the mass flux conservation mass 
flux. What it says is the mass, the mass is which is flowing into the, the shock curve when I sit, the mass come entering is will be equal to the mass leaving the system. So that is nothing but your rho one v one where rho one is the mass density will be equal to rho two v two. And let me call this as some mass flux j. Fine. So and the second conservation condition is the energy flux should also be conserved. That means the energy which is re reaching the shock front should also be equal to the energy which is leaving the shock front. So that means here the energy, so you'll add energy flux conservation. That is, in the upstream fluid the energy is, we know that is, so I can always, uh, there will be two energy, the energy is, one is the, the velocity which is going to give rise to a kinetic energy and uh, kinetic energy flux, we can always calculate. Other thing is the enthalpy of the fluid on the both the sides. The fluid is going to have an internal energy as well as a pressure into uh, pressure and all. So the enthalpy, which is the sum of the internal energy plus, uh, and the PV, so that also has to be conserved. So I can always write this energy flux conservation as rho 1 v1 half v1 squared, this is the kinetic part, plus w1, where w1 is the enthalpy per unit mass, since I'm doing, dealing with the mass density. And this should be equal to rho 2 v2 half v2 squared, plus W2. And where we can write W is nothing but internal energy epsilon plus pressure P into volume. This is a volume per unit mass because we are dealing this as a, this is an this is a internal energy per unit mass and this is a volume per unit mass. So we can, since it's volume per unit mass, so that V will be equal to one by rho, where rho is a mass per unit volume. So this will be volume per unit mass. So this is the second condition. So we will write this one and this is two. So this is the second condition which has to be satisfied in the both the sides of the shock front. And let's go to the third one, that is the last one, that is the momentum flux conservation. That is, so the momentum flux, so momentum is, momentum flux is rho one, v one, v one square because we want to weight, and the pressure is also comes into picture. Because pressure is nothing but force per unit area. If you see dimensionally, that comes equal to the momentum flux. So the pressure also contribute to the momentum flux. So the rho one, v one square plus p one should be equal to rho two, v two square plus p two. So this is the third condition. So these three conditions, one, two, three, yeah. These three conditions basically gives, connects the thermodynamic conditions on the both the sides of the shock front. And so these are called as your shock jump conditions. So let me note down these situations. So we are having the upstream velocity u1 should be equal to magnitude of the shock velocity in the left frame. We have upstream flow velocity fluid is at rest. And then the mass flux is rho1 v1 equal to rho2 v2, which we call it as j. Let this be equation number one. And the second condition is rho 1 v1 into half v1 square plus w1 equal to rho 2 v2 plus half v2 square plus w2. Let this be equation number 2. I missed this. I said it is u1. We are using it as a v1. Let us make it v1. Upstream velocity is v1. Sorry, this is v1. We are calling everything as v1, v2. Fine. And the third condition is, okay, we have, we have one more thing here. W is equal to epsilon plus PV. 
and v is equal to 1 by rho and the last condition is rho 1 v1 square plus p1 equal to rho 2 v2 square plus p2 fine more this Okay, so so we can, I can from this equation the one two three the third equation I can always write this as p two minus p one equal to rho one v one square minus rho two v two square so if I can multiply above and below by rho one and here rho two so this is going to become rho one v one square is nothing but your j square and one by rho one is v so this is going to be j square into v v1 minus p2 this is capital v that's the volume and a small v is the velocity you shouldn't confuse uh, okay so so from here i can write uh, yeah so this gives me j square equal to P2 minus P1 divided by V1 minus V2. So we will note down here J square equal to P2 minus P1 divided by V1 minus V2. Fine. Again, I can use from the same equation 3 what it is. It is rho 1 V1 square plus P1 equal to rho 2 V2 square plus P2. I can write this p1 here again the same thing I can do rho 1 v1 square minus rho 2 v2 square equal to p2 minus p1 and then uh, I can take one v v1 v outside so this rho 1 v v1 is j similarly rho 2 v2 is j so I take j commonly outside so j will be v1 minus v2 and that is equal to p2 minus p1 so this gives me v1 minus v2 is equal to p2 minus p1 into 1 by j. So, 1 by j is nothing but v1 minus v2 divided by p2 minus p1 square root. Okay. So, therefore, so this is going to be a square root of this. So, v1 minus v2 is equal to square root of v2 minus v1 into v1 minus v2. So, let me note down this equation also. v1 minus v2 is equal to square root of p2 minus p1 into v1 minus v2. So, this is the velocity and this is the volume. Now from this equation, what we have, so rho 1 v1 and rho 2 v2 is j, so it gets cancelled off. So what we are going to get is half v1 square plus w1 equal to half v2 square plus w2. So let us take the difference of enthalpy. That is w2 minus w1 will be equal to uh, uh, half v1 square minus v2 square so v1 square we can always write it as j square uh, j square by rho 1 square so this is going to be half j square by rho 1 square and minus v2 square is again j square divided by rho 2 square so now j square I can take commonly outside, therefore w2 minus w1 is equal to j square by 2 and this is 1 by rho 1 square is nothing but v1 square, capital V1 square minus capital V2 square. So, okay, now if we substitute the j square from here, so that is going to be half p2 minus p1 divided by v1 minus v2 and here it is v1 square minus v2 square 
So this makes V1 plus V2. So therefore, W2 minus W1 will be equal to half P2 minus P1 into V1 plus V2. This is V plus 1. This is V V1 plus V2 into V1 minus V2. That cancels off and we get this. Fine, let me write down this equation also. So this is going to be W2 minus W1 will be equal to half P2 minus P1 into V1 plus V2. For a perfect gas, your W can be written as gamma divided by gamma minus 1 p into v where gamma is a polytropic index so when we plug it here so this is going to become gamma into gamma minus 1 and this will be p1 v1 minus p2 v2 that will be equal to half p1 minus sorry p2 minus p1 into V1 plus V2. So let us try to take the ratio of the volume per unit mass in both the sides. So if I uh, I can do some jugglery here, I take a V1 commonly outside here and V1 commonly, V1 gets cancelled. So I'm going to finally get V2 by V1 and V2 by V1. So then we can do some simple jugglery and we can always write V2 by V1 will be equal to P1 gamma plus 1 plus P2 gamma minus 1 divided by P1 gamma minus 1 plus P2 gamma plus 1 and this should be equal to rho 1 by rho 2. So this is a this is simple we can solve it take a V1 outside and V2 by V1 you can always get it out. So we will note down this equation also. So that is going to be V2 by V1, which is equal to rho 1 by rho 2. And that is P1 gamma plus 1 plus P2 gamma minus 1 divided by P1 gamma minus 1 plus P2 gamma plus 1. So this is the next equation. If you want to get how these temperatures are connected, again we can use, uh, considering the ideal gas, P1 V1 by T1 will be equal to P2 V2 by T2. So from here we can write T2 by T1 will be equal to P2, P2 by P1 into V2 by V1. Suppose and V2 by V1, we know it here. So if you substitute here, what we are going to get is, so basically what you get is P2 into P1 gamma plus 1 plus P2 gamma minus 1 divided by P1, P1 gamma minus 1 plus P2 gamma plus 1. So this is the way the temperature and the upstream and the uh, upstream and downstream they are being connected. So we can write this one also. We may not need it, but in ratio we can write it. T2 by T1. P2 into P1 gamma plus 1 plus P2 gamma minus 1 divided by P1 into P2. 1 gamma minus 1 plus P2 into gamma plus 1. Okay. Now let us try to find the uh, upstream and the downstream loss in terms of uh, these quantities. So we can start with this one, J square. So J square equal to P2 minus P1 divided by I will take one V1 commonly outside. So V1 is going to suffer 1 minus P2 by V1. 
and this j square i am going to write it as rho 1 square v 1 square so this will be rho 1 square v 1 sorry v 1 square so now rho 1 square is nothing but my capital uh, v1 so that will be uh, v1 square so this goes off so therefore therefore v1 square will be v1 into p2 minus p1 divided by 1 minus v2 by v1 so now if we try to substitute v2 minus v1 from uh, this equation so what we will get is v1 square this is trivial I am not doing it I will just I will copy it from here so what you will get is v1 by 2 into p1 gamma minus 1 plus p2 gamma plus 1 so this is easy to get and similarly again I can always write this is a j square if I start, if I write j square in terms of rho 2 v, rho 2 square v 2 square then it will be v 2 square by capital v 2 square then I can always find out what is the uh, what is the downstream velocity which is measured from the shock front so remember this v 1 square should be equal to our u square because uh, we are taking the the lap frame of stream fluid is at rest so then we can always find out what is your v 2 square will be equal to v2 by 2 into p1 gamma plus 1 plus p2 gamma minus 1. So these quantities, so let's say write down we have filled that region, so you write it here. So we sorry, v2 square. So v1 square is equal to v1 by 2 p1 into gamma minus 1 plus p2 into gamma plus 1 and similarly v2 the velocity small v2 square will be equal to the volume uh, v2 by 2 p1 into gamma plus 1 plus p2 into gamma minus 1. We can express these quantities in terms of the shock Mach number, where the shock Mach number m is given by the velocity of the shock divided by the sound speed. And the sound speed, we will define the sound speed in the uh, undisturbed fluid, that is the upstream fluid. So Cs can be written as square root of polytropic index into pressure of the upstream fluid as the P1 divided by the rho 1. So therefore, m square will be upstream fluid we are doing so this will be v1 square uh, into c s square right so that will be rho 1 rho 1 divided by gamma p1 so now so if i take rho 1 is nothing but 1 by capital v1 right so if i take it here so your our v1 square will be m square gamma p1 v1 and if I try to substitute here so what will you get if I plug it here so then uh, then never v1 square right so this goes there so that is your m v1 v1 gets cancelled off so m square gamma p1 will be equal to half i can take one p1 also commonly outside so then this p1 also goes off so then will be equal to half gamma minus 1 plus p2 by p1 into gamma plus 1 so and i can take the two this side so this makes it 2 m square gamma so from here i can we can find out so from here, let me see there. From here, we can find out uh, p2 by p1 will be equal to 2m square.
स्क्वायर गामा माइनस गामा माइनस वन डिवाइडेड बाय गामा प्लस वन सो वी हैव पी टू बाय पी वन इक्वल टू टू एम स्क्वायर गामा आई ओपन इट अप माइनस गामा प्लस वन डिवाइडेड बाय गामा प्लस वन so this is the this is the uh, ratio of the pressure in the both the side in terms of the mach number so we can easily see so pressure depends only upon the mach number and the polytropic index so now the same way so we can actually define the density also so we know from here rho one rho one by rho two so if you see here again rho one by rho two I can take the P1 common out. So it cancels. So we get P2 by P1, P2 by P1. So if I substitute that again, the row one by row two, I can define in terms of Mach number and the polytropic index alone. No other, no other quantities will come out. So that you can, if you do it, it is simple. So it's just your jugglery. So that row one, row two, row two by row one will be equal to gamma plus one. Divided by gamma minus one plus two by m square. So this is the way the densities that both of the fluids are related, and this is only depend upon the mach in terms of mach number and the polytropic index. And similarly, again you can do it here also. In the uh, P two by P one again we have this relation here. Here also I can take P one commonly outside. So then we can do, and we can also get. Expose the T two by T one also in terms of gamma and M S. So this will be slightly longer. Two gamma M square minus gamma minus sun. Two plus gamma minus one M square divided by gamma plus one whole square M square. so these equations are actually interesting because they if you see they basically say this is nothing but our v1 by v2 so these three equations relate the thermodynamic conditions on the both the sides of the shock in terms of the mach number and the polytropic index and now now if for the case of uh, uh for the case of uh, strong shock your m will be much much larger than 1 so then we can to the limiting cases we can always find this one as so since this is much higher so uh, uh this term will not dominate much so then in that condition p2 by p1 will be 2 m square gamma because m is much this is much larger than gamma plus 1 So divided by gamma plus. See for a fully ionized plasma, so your gamma, the polytropic index, will be typically the order of five by three. Okay, so we can so that's also close to one. So since this is much larger than one, we can write it like this. So and our so this goes off. So rho two by rho one will be equal to gamma plus one, gamma minus one. And the T two by T one will be equal to. So we can take all this gamma and everything here. So this is gamma minus one m square divided by gamma plus one whole square. So these conditions we will be using it. So, so finally, we got in this lecture we have derived. how the thermodynamic parameters the both the sides of the shock are related which related to each other in terms of the mach number and the polytropic index and now if for a strong shock the mach number is much much larger than 1 so this simply reduces to this equation so we will be uh, start this this is a more simpler equation so we will be studying the next lecture uh, or upcoming lecture the cases for a strong shock so we can use this equation for that to uh, get our 
to understand the shock acceleration force we will consider the case of the strong shock and and uh, so this is an important relation which gives a uh, which connects the thermodynamic quantities on the both sides of the shock and in the next lecture we will see given this thermodynamic quantities on both sides of the shock so now the particle is as the particle is being scattered off from the one fluid upstream to downstream or the downstream to upstream so uh, so it is going to face this going to face this different thermodynamic conditions and we will see how that how it's going to accelerate the particle and and uh, and how this uh, the fraction uh, fractional energy gain it will be in the order of v by c we said earlier in uh, first order we will see those things in the next lecture thank you